Good afternoon beautiful people. Welcome to yet another Technical Tuesday video. Now before I start we are doing this video based on some suggestions that we've had on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page. So if you have suggestions for things you want to see, please, please, please head over to either our Facebook page or comment down below. And if we get enough uh, interest, we'll make the video. Anyway, today's video is something that we've had a lot of interest about. And the title of the video is how we check in and check out of different countries, what the formalities are and what the costs are. And the reason we're doing this is obviously to inform you, but also because kind of as you, if you watch our videos, you will see that we continually try and encourage people to kind of go further afield, to kind of plan longer cruises, different countries. And if this is an obstacle that's kind of holding you back from doing that sort of cruising, then hopefully this will kind of make you go that little yard further and maybe set off, maybe head for the Bahamas if you're in America, for France if you're in England or anywhere else in the world. So stay put, watch here, and hopefully this will make life a little bit easier for you. But the first thing you need to do when you are planning on going to another country is understand the requirements of that country before you set off. Some countries, obviously, if you've traveled by plane before, you will know that you need visas for those countries before you set off. And it's important to make sure that you know all those formalities. So, for instance, when we travel to the US, we f phoned ahead, we phoned CBP, the Customs and Border Protection, to tell them that we were going to arrive. I know, for instance, that Australia need you to inform them by email before you arrive that you are going to arrive in their country. So go to websites like Noonsight, noonsight.com, or other cruisers forums to Google or to find out what the requirements are in advance. For just about every country, there are certain requirements that are identical. You need to have your passports if you're driving by boat and if you're driving by plane. You need to have your ship's registration document. You need to fly a Q flag as you enter international waters and as you tie up in a marina or you anchor. And you need to fly that Q flag until you have been successfully cleared into the whatever country you're in. It is also really, really, really important here that you respect the rules of that country. There are stories on the internet, all over the internet, about skippers and sailors that were still firing their cue flags. They hadn't cleared in properly either because it was too late or they were too tired and they went ashore to eat or they carried out commerce in that country and they were caught and fined horrendously. The fines can be eye-watering. So please, when you check into a country, make sure that you do abide by the rules of that country and check in before you step off the boat. So anyway, when you check into the country, you will need, as I've said, you will need the passports of the crew, anyone that's on board as well as the skipper, you will need your ship's documents. And if you are entering a marina, you will need your insurance documents. Now, for a lot of countries, you can enter a port, a specific port of entry and tie up in a marina and customs and immigration will come to you. Other countries, they, you can anchor and then go into specific customs and immigration docks. It tends to be that when we were cruising the Caribbean or the Caribbean islands, there are specific ports of entry and you will have to go to the customs building, the immigration building and the port authority building. They're normally kept fairly close together to check in. Now, when you do go into these buildings, we have found that you have to be super polite and super well dressed. I'm not, I don't mean you've got to turn up in a business suit, but you turn up in clean clothes you turn up with shoes on and you turn up with a clean pair of shorts on. You do not turn up in, in bathing shorts. Um, you don't turn up in a vest. We have seen uh, sailors turned away for inappropriate attire. And different islands will require a different level of kind of courtesy. As you enter them, we always err to the side of caution. These are, after all, government organisations and treat them with the due respect. So, you've called ahead. You have raised your queue flag and you have entered territorial waters of the country that you're going into. Some countries will let you anchor 
um, and check in. Other countries will want you to dock and check in and the reason for that is that they sometimes want to board your boat and if they want to board your boat with or without dogs, sniffer dogs for obvious reasons, um, they need you to be tied up to a dock. So the first thing you do, once you've tied up, you go straight to the Customs and Immigration Office, you do not go anywhere else, and you go in with your papers. It is, for most countries, you go in as a skipper alone, you don't take your crew with you. And so it's important that you know in advance do they want all the crew or just the skipper to go on board. So again, make sure that you're aware of that requirement before you kind of get off the boat. Another thing is always take a pen with you. Um, they tend to really not have that many pens and some ports can be really, really busy. Like if you're going in and out of the BVI's, Soper's Hole for instance is absolutely crazy. There can be like 20 people queuing up or waiting for pens. I take a book with you because sometimes the wait can be really, really long if there's a big queue and prepare to be patient and courteous. One question that we also get in association with, with how you check in is uh, the costs associated with everything. Now, what I would say to you is the costs vary from island to island or from country to country. Some countries have been really, really kind of like easy to get into and some countries need a little bit more work. So I'll start with some of the easiest countries or the islands that we've been to. Firstly, the entire of Europe, so the entire Schengen zone, as well as the French islands, uh, St. Bart's, uh, Martinique and the European islands of, of St. Martin. Because they are all European and we're a European boat, you just check in once. And for American boats or non-EU flag boats coming to Europe, you check into the first country that you come to. So the Azores is part of Portugal or Portugal or France. And then you're free to travel. You haven't got to check in and out anywhere else. The costs to check into the Eurozone are zero. There is no cost associated with that, although the port or the marina may levy a small charge at you. So it's important that you kind of like understand that the, the additional charges uh, for checking into a country may actually come from the Port Authority. I've been through a lot of our, our documentation to find out exactly who charged us what. Turks and Caicos, for instance, Turks and Caicos, it was $60 in and $30 out. And that was based on us checking in out of working hours. So if you check in, outside of their regular working hours you will get additional charges. This is the US document. Checking into the US that was $37. Now all I would say is that of all the countries we have checked into the US was probably one of the most difficult. They obviously have a really strict and correctly or so homeland security policy. You need to radio in advance, you need to tell them exactly what port you're in and more importantly and we actually fell foul of this because we were completely unaware and as you may know from watching what we do we were so fastidious about all our preparations you need to dock in a, a marina which is approved by homeland security so check in advance check the state that you're going into they all have different requirements so phone ahead again they told us exactly where to go and i think it was 37 us dollars to check into the us Antigua, Antigua, $40. That was a $40 check-in, so it's 40 Caribbean EC dollars. Uh, I think that's about two to the US dollar. BVI's, $13. And again, I have all these papers which highlight exactly what we had to spend. The most expensive place that we've been to actually for checking in is the Bahamas. The Bahamas have a policy where you get a year's cruising permit, and that cruising permit also comes with a fishing permit and you pay for the people on board. And overall, it's a, th a round fee of 300 uh, US dollars. That's, you think it's quite expensive, but really once you get in there, you've got a year's cruising for $300. So it's important to understand that you have to pay, um, you know, for one year in advance and you can't pay for any less. In addition to this, a lot of islands, customs and immigration won't take credit cards. The Bahamas have only recently started taking credit cards in certain places, so arrive with cash. So that if you're coming from the States, they will take US dollars, you've got enough cash to pay up front. Overall, it hasn't been difficult to check in. Sometimes it's lengthy. For instance, when we cruised Morocco, Morocco was a difficult place to check in and they wanted to know every time we left port. So when we were cruising Morocco, 
We'd go into a port, they would photocopy or in some cases actually take our passports and our ship's papers and then give them back to us as we left. So every port we went to, we would have to make that declaration. We've only ever accounted it actually in the US. The US want us every time we change jurisdiction, which is statewide or citywide in, for instance, uh, South Carolina and Florida where we were cruising, they wanted to know where we were and we had to log that by telephone call. It's very easy to travel around the world. It's not difficult to check in and out of ports. The costs aren't particularly high and it shouldn't in any way be a barrier to you traveling around and enjoying, you know, the rich pageant that is cruising uh, different countries. So I hope you enjoyed this. The reason that we're doing it in this environment and we put this on Facebook the other day is we cannot film um, customs and immigration. We can't film the police. There are very strict rules about filming government buildings and even if we were slightly concerned about falling foul of that we just would out of respect and obviously to make sure that we don't get ourselves into trouble um, not have any camera uh, equipment near government offices so for this reason we're on the boat for this video alone and subsequent technical Tuesdays we'll carry on and do our own um, filming outside anyway hope you enjoyed it our social media will all be below um, please feel free to subscribe click the notification bell and we will continue with our regular videos as we now cruise Europe and um, see you soon bye bye